Oh. Oh, I went to the church. Dang. Oh. I think we might have just skipped all those special locations. Hmm. Well, not much I can do about that, I guess. Maybe when we get back on the road, who knows. Random access self-storage. And this is being turned into a church? Is that it over there? I don't see any congregation. Maybe it's after hours. Let's see what the janitor knows, I guess. There's nothing here. Oh! Here for the night mass? Oh, so there is a mass. What kind of mass is it? Tonight. It's a homily on work and need. Huh. I haven't heard of this one before. Are you the preacher? Oh, I'm the janitor. I guess this must look pretty strange. A church without a congregation. When they first moved in here, man, this place was packed. They had a mass every night. Two on Tuesday, two on Sunday. But then it got a bit awkward to fit everyone in, and the numbers quickly dwindled. Once folks started to see it as a thing that was just falling apart, they lost their center of gravity and just started wobbling. Then the preacher stopped coming too, but he left his old tapes, same with the organist. And I found some old acetates in the bureau archives, photos of people in churches, so I keep it running. You do what you have to, right? We've all got a job. Shannon is more like no nonsense. <laughs> Work is play for mortal stakes. That's the title of the evening's homily, in fact. So I guess if you folks aren't here for the mass, you must be looking for the old bureau records. I moved them down to unit C315 to make room for the mass. It's down at the other end of the building, same floor. I need to get to the- I need to get the night mass started, but you can borrow my keys. I'll go. You wait here. Rest your leg. You're looking kinda pale. Nice lady. Well, I better get this running. Hmm. Is your whole family Catholic? Oh no, we're not religious. I just watched and listened while the congregation did all this stuff, and I probably don't understand it as much of it as you might think. Anyway, I know how to run the overhead projector and the tape player. At least I know enough to keep it going, right? Wasn't there something earlier about how if you take away the sense of sight, then you start paying attention to the audio even more? We can listen. Oh. On this day, we celebrate with the feast of Saint Joseph the Worker, and on this day, other workers are also celebrating. Workers who do not attend Mass, or even like- or even one like it. Even workers who do not attend a church at all, but who toil with clarity, with dedication, with perspicacity, who do as we do here in our church, inasmuch as they reflect the activity of God. As we do, they cultivate the earth, and, at sundown, they call the fruit of their labor very good. My leg is killing me. I bet everyone's telling you to go see a doctor. Hey, I get it. Too expensive. My dad cut his arm pretty bad on a job, but he stitched himself back up because we didn't have health insurance. But then, his hand didn't work very well and he got pretty depressed. And eventually, he just sort of... Well, I guess I don't know what he should have done. Who knows, right? So, this is like a hobby? If you ask me what my hobbies were, I would say card games, science fiction, and perspective geometry. But I run the slideshow, and I play the tapes, and I don't get paid for it. I take it pretty seriously, but nobody's telling me I should. Is that a hobby? Seems like there ought to be a more serious word for it. Okay, that's it. 
Next, there are some rituals that you and I aren't allowed to participate in. I don't think. And I don't remember them anyway. Hi, got it. Huh. We were just talking about work and hobbies. What? I found out what we came here to get. The file on the street name changes. You don't look... good. Let's head back to the bureau and get this straightened out. And then maybe we should go see the doctor the clerk recommended. Like, I'm making my delivery, but why is Shannon following me again? I thought she was looking for something in the mines, but she seems like she's full-time following me now. Maybe because of my leg. Damn, that was a pretty cool exit screen. Oh, okay. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? I'm okay. I've got you. You're alright. Shit, your leg is pinned. I'm gonna pull you out. We'll have to get you out of here. Did I fall down? Is that why it turned black? There you go. Okay. Are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful, I'm right here. Damn, don't worry, I've got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Oh. <laughs> hey, old man, look at me. Can you hear me? What happened? I don't know, he collapsed. I think he blacked out. He was mumbling about the old mine for a minute. The mine where we met. I'm okay. <laughs> Bullshit. We're going to see that doctor. How do we get to this address from here? Um, I don't know. It's pretty tricky going back and forth between, you know, here and there. The bureau's the only way I know. Some of the folks do it all the time. Commuters. Everybody here seems to know about the Zero. Is there like a special requirement for being able to see it though? There's so many people here. But then earlier, we couldn't really find the entrance until we... I don't know, we came back with Shannon and then we just saw it. Just go back the way you came, find the crystal, and then turn around. Alright. Do we want to try looking for the other places though? Maybe we'll wander around for a little bit first? Yeah, there's a lot more reading in this than I thought initially, so... If it's a... If it's a part that doesn't feel like it's the most important of things, maybe I'm just gonna... Go slowly and let it play on the screen, because my throat is a little bit... <clears throat> it's a little bit, um... Not hanging in there right now. Mm, we've seen this one. Wait. Which one did we see? The feather. Yeah, we saw the... River tunnels? Yes. Where's the gallery? Uh, we need to find a TV. I don't know, maybe we need to find one of those landmarks first. And then go somewhere from there. Hey, we're back here again! Can we not get to those places anymore? Because the only one that seems like is still here is the crystal. Can we go back? Oh, what the heck, the bureau's here. Yeah, the crystal and the bureau, those are pretty easily found. The jaws. Jeez. Anything involving the jaws here? Bottle? Scarecrow? Pendulum? Feather? Nothing about jaws. So I guess we can't find anything here? The bat wings. 
Nothing about the bat wings either. The TV! TV. One of these, yes. When you reach the TV, drive clockwise to the antenna. Now turn around again. And this goes to the gallery? Alright. Oh. What am I looking for here again? <laughs> I forgot already. Not these things, though. The antenna. And then... The barn. There we go. A gallery of mislaid features, abandoned on lonely highways, as American industrial design shifted its gaze to the intangible. It's a large warehouse, full of oddly shaped vehicles, blimp-like, rusted vessels, mostly painted in a dull green that has now faded toward brown. No path has been carved to navigate between them, and many have been damaged enough to leave menacing bits of metal running jaggedly through their small open spaces. It's all a visitor can do to stand at the edge of the building, neck crane, trying to get a glimpse of something. So they're not like anything too crazy. Just little surreal sights around here, I guess. Drive clockwise toward the feather, then come back to the talon. I don't know. Should I let Shannon drive again? You almost went off the road there for a second. Can I take over? Mm, but she's probably gonna take me to the doctor. I'm fine. Let's look around a little bit more. The blades. Can I go back to the feathers again? Oh, my mouse is not doing that thing anymore. Where I'm like being guided towards places. Hmm. H frame? What is that? TV. Dude, I am lost. Yeah, I'm pretty... Mm, I'm pretty lost here. It doesn't seem like we can go back to the places that we've seen before. Oh, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's Shannon take over then. Yeah, I saw you yawning. Here, let me drive. Oh! I thought we were going to the doctor. No? Well, I guess we can go back in for now. Scene 3 Alright. We got the documents. So why are we coming back again? Do we just somehow mysteriously not know how to read the documents? Is that a cat? Back so soon? Can we talk to Lula again? Ooh, we need to get to the interstate. No, we don't. Not yet. I'm afraid she left. In a big hurry, actually. Something happened with your meeting? Mm, she seemed pretty interested in the gas station attendant. I don't know who that is, but she did seem distressed. Well, heading back to the interstate? I can process you whenever you're ready to go back. Just let me know. Uh, a few more things. A few more things. Oh, well, I thought we were coming back for Lula, but if not, then I guess I'll make another attempt to try to find the places for the secret tourism. Quick rounds. 
Yeah, and then I'm guessing what we do is we come back here and then tell the lady that we're ready to go back to the, you know, the normal waking world. Okay, I think if we go this way, we can find the feather. So let's just, let's just go that way for now. Crystal? It's like going through some wormhole. It's crazy. Yep. Mineral Springs. Then come back to the Talon. Come back means drive counterclockwise? Mm. We never even saw a Talon, so this might take... Birdhouse. Feather! Birdhouse! Lots of bird-related stuff, huh? Yep. A talon. That's also bird-related. These mineral springs radiate with vigor and sweat youth from the pores of the cave walls. The air does have a warmth and fragrance to it that seems to relax the nostrils. Ooh! We can rest our leg here, alright. The water is warmer than it looks, and strangely soothing. Think about the night stars. Conway remembers some of Charlie's homework, from when he first went to college. Charlie was home visiting Lysette and Ira for the weekend. Lysette and Ira are married, I think. Our bosses. And had some book about astronomy. Or physics or something. Maybe math. Watching the relative speeds at which different stars pan across the sky, and using it to determine their distance. Who's Charlie? Visiting Lysette and Ira? Is that like Lysette's son? Hmm. That was that. Alright. Next thing that we can go to would be meditation tunnels. Clockwise to the scarecrow, and then counterclockwise to the pendulum. Okay, first we gotta find the scarecrow. Scarecrow. Then turn around until the pendulum. The robo. Oh? Hey, this is not... We don't know about this. What is this? That's... odd. What? Just... you know... deja vu. Same here. I always feel kind of embarrassed when that happens. Like I'm in a play, but I don't know my lines. Whoa. Oh well. Deja vu of what? Oh, well, we got something a little bit more than just text here, huh? Although... Is that the radio? Oh! What was that? Where am I going? The bat feeder. I was going clockwise until... This pendulum. And then I'm going back. Okay, that was strange. Oh, Kinda scary. Taking these tunnel- take these tunnels as a site for meditation.
left again. You know, I keep thinking that something is wrong with my headphones, but that's just how the sound is, huh? It's just cutting in and out. Moss. Ooh. Close eyes. Oh. And then we just leave. Hmm. The last one is... Drive counterclockwise to find... The... Bottle. Okay. How is everyone here just taking all of this... Everyone just seems to be like, oh, okay, this is just how it is, and... Nothing here conforms to reality. It is so crazy, but everyone's just like, oh, okay. So... Something like, oh, you know, this is all within Conway's dreams. Something like that could totally happen. To the still, okay. And those sounds are kind of scary, too. The music? It sort of sounds like, I don't know, reversing a record player or something. An epic laceration to the very heart of the world, certainly left by some great power, perhaps a casualty in a battle between god and dinosaur. It's more of a rocky valley separating the road from a sheer cliff face. The rock slopes into shadow, with a few dozen lanterns strung across at an interval suggesting its scale, larger than a basketball court but smaller than a financial district. Hmm. A lot of little weird happenings here. But I think that's it. That's all for the locations on the map, so... We can get back to the Bureau and get back to Interstate 65. Because we've been in- Whoa. This is not the Bureau. The uh, Shannon, please take me back to the Bureau. <laughs> what- Oh no, what is happening? The crystal. I know if we get back from the crystal, that leads back to the bureau. Hey, what happened to the bureau? Oh, this is scaring me. Haha, <laughs> what is happening? What's more? We're back at the storage facility. But we don't need to go there. Oh, thank the lords, all right. Oh. The scene changed. I thought we were going back to Interstate 65. Oh. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Hey, Marianne. I can process you whenever you're ready to go. We're ready to be processed. Can you tell us how to get to this address? We're looking for Dr. Truman. Of course. This is in a neighborhood just outside of Bowling Green. Get on 65 going southwest. Take a right just past the observatory. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Happy to help. How do we get back to 65? Oh, okay, we just sort of exited the zero and went back to the farmhouse. Oh, okay. All right. Has anything else changed? For example, do we want to go back to Equus Oils and see what's up? Is Joseph still here? We might be able to talk to him about Lula. Joseph has fallen asleep in his chair. I guess not. Okay, well, let's just follow the instructions then. Get on 65, going southwest. Take a right just past the observatory. Okay, take a right past the observatory. Well, let's find the freaking observatory first. 
to the southwest. Uh, well, we are going southwest, but I don't... Ooh, there it is. And then what? Take a right. Just before the river. Alright, so my right from the car, right? And then if I keep going right, there we go. The neighborhood at the address on Lula's card has been demolished? In its place is a large museum, still partially under construction. I wonder if time... Does time does not go by the same way within and outside the zero? We're still going, even though it's not... Okay. Oh, it's raining. Oh yeah, he was talking to his dog. Guy was weirdo. Doesn't seem that weird. You didn't see the guy. Tall, kind of stooped over, limping bad. Looked like an old drunk if you ask me. I bet they were both drunks, breaking in here looking for a place to sleep at all. They're talking about me. I just feel bad for that old dog, getting dragged all over by a couple of drunks. Old dog like that should be sleeping on a porch somewhere, but that's loyalty for you. Well, they didn't stay long anyway. <laughs> I heard the man and the lady talking when they first came in, but they didn't see me. He had his umbrella open inside. Oh, <laughs> What were they talking about? The man said his leg was hurting him. They were looking for Dr. Truman, but he was already gone. But they didn't know, so they kept looking around. Ah, very clever here. So whenever I try to talk to Shannon, we're actually hearing about the conversation from like some other random person who was at the museum. What's wrong with having an umbrella indoors? Jeez. So judgmental. I just assumed they were from the power company. You know how they're always coming by un unannounced and messing with this or that. I just shut myself up in my room and waited out. No sense getting involved. How did they get in? Must have been one of those kids who left the front door unlocked. Something's gotta be done. They run around like animals. You know that Flora left a can of soda on top of my shelter door? And I almost killed myself slipping on that sticky mess the next morning? Something's gotta be done. Something's gotta be done. Is the theme here. Are you hinting for me to do something? Well, we shouldn't have the umbrella on indoors, but uh... We've talked to Shannon. We've talked to Homer. Something has gotta be done. Oh, okay, we can keep going. Oh? Oh, is that my truck? We're going outside. No? Can we go outside now? It's not really letting me go outside. Yeah, it's not letting me click anything. Hmm. Maybe there's something I'm missing in here? Look, people, I'm limping real bad. Just let me let me get to where I need to be. Oh! Whoa, okay. Hey, person. Ah! It's one of those fancy museums that let you go on tours of what the place was like before. They have actors and everything. I was playing in that empty cabin and they came by. They asked about Dr. Truman. I know where he went, but I didn't tell them. Where did Dr. Truman go? It's a secret. Ezra told me, and I can't tell anyone else. Who's Ezra? He's my age. He doesn't really live here. He's just passing through with his brother, Julian. 
First, they're going to help us, but I can't say more about that. We have a lot of secrets. The lady asked me about my parents, and I told them they were upstairs in the greenhouse. Do you want to hear a weird story? Fine, but I'm not gonna read it because my throat is really... Yeah. <clears throat> Other house in a cabin. They always dim it so that you only pay attention to the words here. He looked in some boxes, looked out the window. He could see the museum better than when he was downstairs. Now, the part that is weird. He said he went into the basement. That cabin doesn't have a basement. He said he found a staircase in a closet. Then he found a rope leading down a long pit, and he climbed down. Aphids? Ooh. The walls were covered in a glowing moss. <laughs> he used the light of the moss to find a lake at the bottom of the pit. The water... Mm. He was a good swimmer, so he found his way back to the cabin. Another strange little story. Oh, there's a guy. Oh, that's me. I went inside. Oh, I went inside the exhibition. That's interesting. Ooh. This is like Lula's museum thing again. We're going through exhibits. Sadie. The old man, Conway, stopped to rest. Or maybe to think. The young woman had been anxious up until that point, but she stopped as well, and examined the birdcage more closely. It seemed to elicit a tenderness from her. She ran one fingernail along the bars of the wire cage, marking out a, a tuneless scale like a child's xylophone. And then they moved on. We need to find clues of Dr. Truman in here. Oh. We gotta go near the thing. Sure, I talked to them for a bit. Actually, we talked for quite a while. Wasn't busy. Was happy for the company. Can't sleep in a storm like that. Never could. What did you talk about? I had a bottle in my coat, and I could see the old guy looking at it, and his leg was hurt pretty bad, so I offered him some. He got real awkward about it. Bet he's in a program. Oh, <laughs> am I an alcoholic? Anyway, they were asking about Dr. Truman. I remember him. He was here for a bit, and then he left. So that's what I told them. Hmm. So Dr. Truman's not here. But we're looking around the museum anyway. Fine. Ooh. What is this? <laughs> we're waiting for Homer. If we're at a museum, where does this elevator even go to? Hmm. 
Guess now is why we need an umbrella. Whoa, what was that? Wait, we're going back down again? Oh. Maybe I needed to get my umbrella out? Oh, I'm not sure what that was. Let me try having my umbrella on and then going up again. Okay, we can walk out. I thought I saw a bird just now though. What was that? We were working in the greenhouse and I saw them come up the elevator. They were lost. Oh! They were lost, obviously. It was obvious. Because we have no idea what we're doing. Oh, of course. I saw them looking at that odd shaped building. The. Sure, the round metal one. Yeah, that one. House of the future sort of thing. I always thought it looked more like a grain bin. Actually, I guess it's sort of romantic. Anyway, they seem interested in it. Tired, huddling under their umbrellas, they still stop to examine the strange building. Yeah, I'm, I am a little bit tired right now. We've been going on for so long and all I want to do is find the doctor, but... I'm not really getting too close with that aspect. Difficult to see or even hear, a storm like that. But I was awake and alert, studying the week's forecast. It should even out shortly, I'd say. Did you talk to them? Yeah, had a short conversation. The young woman heard my radio crackling from the cabin and asked me about it. The old man was a bit disoriented. Disoriented how? He asked the most inane questions about my boat. Whether I took it out fishing often, nonsense like that. I tried to explain to him that I lived aboard, that I'd lived in a small apartment on this land before, and been kindly offered an opportunity to live here, in a sailboat, when the neighborhood was raised, and so on. It's difficult to communicate in a noisy storm like that. I think he might have been a bit hard of hearing to boot. I think the pain is, um... Yeah, the pain is getting a little bit too much for Conway to pay attention. We're not gonna find the doctor if we continue here, though. Glass of wine in the greenhouse. We ducked out of the way when they came in. Did they seem dangerous? No. But you just can't know, can you? How could you? Annie is like echoing the people or something. Well, I heard the young woman ask her friend about his job. He's some kind of future furniture collector or dealer, I think. It didn't sound like things were going well. Maybe they were here looking for a buyer? Oh. No, 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 we're making a delivery to Dogwood. Yeah. Antiques. Not quite what you were thinking, though. It's a pretty creative way for them to convey the story like this. Instead of just us asking and talking to the people here, it's like. Oh, Ezra. Ezra knows where Dr. Truman is. It's like um people later on talking to random museum staff, relaying what previous things we did. That's pretty cool. I saw you folks drive up. I like your truck. What kind of truck is that? <laughs> Shannon, do you know where Dr. Truman is? Hmm. It doesn't belong to me. I just drive it. Yeah, I knew you were a driver. What's the biggest haul you ever did? I moved a couple of horses once, in a different truck. Me and Julian move whole houses every night. That's a lot bigger than a couple ho whoa, horses. Uh, that sounds very impressive and fake. Who's Julian? Julian's my brother. He's a lot bigger and stronger. And he has more feathers than me. 
But he's still my brother. Hmm. Where do you take the houses? Me and Julian take them out to the forest every night. And then we bring them back at dawn. Before the museum opens. Why do you take them to the forest? This museum is an okay place to live in the daytime, but it's no good at night. Folks just can't sleep in a place like this, or when they do it, gives them nightmares. So we take them out to the forest to sleep, and then bring them back in the morning. I'm getting pretty tired myself. He hurt his leg. We're looking for Dr. Truman to help him out. Is he out in the forest? Yes, ma'am. He's out in the forest. Me and Julian took him out there a few nights ago, and he didn't want to come back. He lives there all the time now. Can you tell us how to get there? You have to follow the Green River way out east, and then hop over Lake Cumberland. The roads don't go there. But me and Julian can take you. We were just about to go anyway. I've just got to call him over. Oh! It's the bird! <laughs> this guy's brother is the bird! Oh my god. That is ridiculous. Holy! Whoa! Can we still look at that? Oh, do I get to drive or? From this height, the museum looks like a blocky crater, slowly filling with rain. Are you taking me or? Are we just flying in circles here? I think so, yeah. We gotta go up the Green River, I think, was it? Let's assume so. Or, we could check. <laughs> Follow the Green River way out east and then hop over Lake Cumberland. Well, this is certainly not a method of transportation I was expecting to be taking. Damn. All the way out. Hang on. It says follow the green river all the way out east, but the way I'm going right now is like west. Is that okay? Well, we can just fly around anyway, I guess. Keep following the green river. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're following it in the right direction. We're going backwards. But maybe we can see... What... Is here? At the beginning of the river? If there's such a thing? Chapel. A chapel and graveyard, disconnected from any road, in the middle of a dark woods. Occasionally, it seems that pale glowing figures, difficult to track with the eye, appear... appears. Sometimes they roll huge barrels in or out of the building. Sometimes they just loiter for a moment, then fade out of view. Yeah, I think we're going a little bit too far here. It doesn't continue, so we have to follow this east then. Let's go back. Following the Green River, that might be Lake Cumberland right here. Is it? Nolan River Lake, bait shop. A large dirt parking lot surrounds the bait shop. A sign is vaulted above the road on a thin steel bar. No, we're not following the Nolan River. Gotta keep following the Green River. Small figure. A tiny gray figure walks along the side of the road, carrying what appears to be a guitar case. He is followed closely by a smaller shape, a dog? Hey, it's the guitar guy! He looks tired. The guitar guy that I freaking <laughs> I put like money into his whiskey, so that wasn't very kind of me. 
flying past this at the speed and angle, the farmhouse is invisible among the trees. Its location is only marked by Conway and Shannon's memories. Damn, like that very 2D and static map that we were looking at. That I thought was quite cool already, but now it's like, so dynamic. The huge swaying tipple looks like small wooden lattice framing the edge of the mine entrance. All the way out east. Splitting off a little bit. Oh, there's a lake. A shadowy figure drags itself out of the lake, stuffed its, stuffs its limbs into a smart blue suit. Oops. I wanted the eagle to fly, but then I accidentally clicked out of it. <gasps> Green River Lake. So not quite at Lake Cumberland just yet. Oh, over here maybe? It kind of splits off to two. Yeah, this is not a place that's travelable by car or truck. Here's Lake Cumberland. How do we land? Hop over Lake Cumberland. There's got to be a landing point somewhere here. It's like a long snake. Oh. Forest. Well, we're here. <laughs> oh. Am I the doctor? I'm not Conway. Well, what is following me? That dog is a little funny looking. Oh, I have a dog too. Whoa! Am I? I'm so small. Am I Ezra? It's okay. Just take it easy. I'll just close my eyes. I don't think that's a good idea. Just take some strain off your leg for a minute, and then we'll keep going. Why is... Why is this delivery so important to you? I don't know. Okay, well... Who knows why we do anything, right? Somehow it seems important to me, too. Maybe we'll figure it out when we get there. Everything is very symbolic here. Nothing is really what it seems. Very abstract. Ah, I am Ezra. Oh, I'm talking- that must be Homer then. Homer just looked a little bit weird because we're so big, I guess. How'd you come to be with these people? Nah, I know. You were probably met on a farm or something. I bet the lady fixed tractors. <laughs> it's that singing again. Oh, what the hell? Look at the bird here. I wasn't even really realizing it, but it's sort of just like melded into the forest and... Like... This area? It's, what's going on with the... Oh my gosh. And the tail area too. In between the tree trunks. You expect to see the, the bird between the tree trunks, right? But it's actually showing on the tree trunks and not between the tree trunks. Or hang on, am I looking at this wrong? This per the perspective is a little bit funny here. The black is the tree, right? Yeah, oh my- oh god, okay. Conway! How did 
quick home we get here? Whoa. Ah, it's like we're looking at a slideshow thing now. <sighs> they keep impressing me with their presentation. Wow. Shouldn't be much farther now. I think I see where the settlement ends over there. These woods go on forever. Well, no forest goes on forever. At some point, there's always a road or something. A parking lot. Don't act so defeated, okay? I'm just thinking about getting back to work. We're almost there. We'll get you patched up and back in that truck. We can handle this. So even though Ezra is just walking across the screen, what's actually happening in real time, quote unquote, real time, is that we are all traversing the screen together. Have you ever been here in the, in the winter? I bet the lake freezes. You can walk anywhere. Oh! Oh my goodness, what is... Oh. And the guy's continually singing following us too. <laughs> you doing okay, Conway? Do you have any family you're close with? Brother or sisters? Kids? I have a brother, but I wouldn't say we're close. What does he do? Some kind of banker. <laughs> Some kind of banker. Kind of a jerk sometimes. We get to the side, sort of. Yeah, I know the type. Never talk to him? He's too good for me, I guess. I doubt that. I guess I was always closest with Weaver. As close as someone can be with a girl like that. She was always on her own wavelength, but we were the same age growing up, and everyone else was so busy. When she disappeared, I got pretty angry, and I guess I just stayed that way. I never really understood her, but I knew her. It's lonely without someone like that around. Sorry, I'm... you're a good listener. Bonding. You have a way of falling behind, don't you? Me, I'm always too far ahead. It's just the way I am. Ooh, maybe I should slow down a bit, like you. You know, it's kind of... The one little strange thing is that whenever we see Conway and Shannon talk to each other, they're completely ignoring Ezra. So I wonder if Ezra's really even here. We have a car, and the dog, Homer, is really the only thing that's constant Stuck with us here. Oh, we're, we were just going through the woods by ourselves. Where have you been? We lost sight of you for a minute. Yep. It's easy to get lost, especially out in the woods like this. I never really get lost, though. I just look up for Julian. He's always around. My folks had a really nice house, bigger than any of these houses, but it made them worried all the same. Then the bank took it back. We had to sleep at the bus station, but I couldn't ever get to sleep. So I just went out and fly, over, fly around every night with Julian. We flew really far, and we never got lost. But when we came back in the morning, they were all gone. They just left you? I don't think so. All our stuff was still there. Maybe they got lost somewhere. Let's go see what's on TV. The fabled Dr. Truman. And yeah. I think that exit interview 
is when I really realized how badly they had me. But how else can you pay for medical school? I have college friends with debts that... You can't expect to pay that back unless you're planning to sell painkillers on the side or something. Or, you know, some kind of administrative thing. Oh, I think he's talking about how he ended up in the forest. I don't know. Having seen what arthritis did to my grandmother, and my best friend in high school destroy his wrists building synthesizers. I mean, he was like, 17. Ailments of the joints and limbs just seem important to me. I hope that answers your question. Getting a scholarship with that pharmaceutical company had a lot of strings attached. But at least I have somewhere to practice, even if I have to follow their market trends a bit. And hey, thanks to all those seminars, I'm an expert on the medical uses of neuripnol. It's not so bad. So, how about the leg? What happened exactly? It was too dark to tell, really. Oh, stumbling around in the dark. Hey, you might have just twisted it on something, right? Let's have a look. TV again. What are they singing about? They're singing about hard times. Yeah, everybody has it pretty rough right now. Even if you just want to go home, you'll have problems. Like, it'll be too dark and you'll get scared. It's hard sometimes, but things have a way of working out. Dr. Truman's gonna help your friend. He'll be okay. But it's nothing we can't handle. You might have a few things to look out for in the future. Be a bit gentler with the leg or the way you walk, but you'll be okay. I've dealt with similar cases before. So, the anesthetic we'll use is called Neripnol. It's pretty experimental, but it's more appropriate in cases like yours. The way it works is, I'll count backwards from 5 to start the process, and then we'll just have a normal conversation as a Neripnol takes effect. Then I'll get started. Uh, is this gonna, like, drug me? Make me feel weird? Here we go. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. So, let's talk about billing for a moment. The pharmaceutical company I'm contracted with was recently acquired by a energy company that has some different standards for billing and revenue. So it's a bit complex now, and what is going on here? It's like going to the zero all over again. Don't tell me that's the end. Damn. Okay, well, we've played two acts of this now, and I feel like I understand it a little bit better, but I am a little bit torn. Hmm. This is probably one of the nichest things I've ever played. Nichest? Most niche? things I've played on the channel before. I think this is even more niche than the usual walking simulator stuff. The way it presents itself, some of the things it does is just so unlike anything I've ever played before. And I mean that positively. Like the whole scene just now with the Ezra going through the woods, but that's actually the passing of time. The eagle, it's like half morphing in and out of reality and Oh my goodness, like, a lot of things are really, really, really unique on the presentation front. It's very much like, um, turn off all the lights in your room and then play it at 11pm alone in the dark sort of game. And over the course of these two acts, it's become apparent to me that delivering the package to Dogwood Drive was never the, it was never the main thing here. Because if you think about it, since 10 minutes into Act 1, 
We've not made any progress on that front. We are still trying to look for the dogwood drive and we have no idea where it is. And I suspect that maybe that's something we'll find out finally in Act 5, the last one. But again, that's not the focus here. The focus is all the, the weird stuff that goes along in the journey. And yeah, so it's not a plot-driven thing, which um, I need to adjust my expectations about it a little bit. I played this whole act in one sitting, and I felt like I was running out of steam a little bit by the end. Partially because there was so much reading, but I think it's natural to expect some plot movement, but not a lot of it is necessarily happening, which um, you gotta be in the right mindset to either play or watch this. It's a very like sort of muted, surreal experience, and I think a lot of people will think this game is boring as hell. And I can sort of see where they're coming from too, because we've read a lot. Like, take for example, while we were driving around the Zero, we went into the tunnels and the galleries and whatnot. Plot-wise, none of those really amounted to anything, so I can see how people would be frustrated by it. Yeah, this is a very niche title, but I am sort of interested in seeing where it goes, and I've heard that it picks up in Act 3, so... Uh, I don't think I should be expecting anything too different from what we've been seeing so far, but maybe, maybe Act 3 will change things up a little bit. We'll all find out next time.